So what we'll do is we'll turn it on, see what happens. Yep, battery is cactus. And now we want to do a control break. If that's what I think this is, and I've pretty much just wasted the last half an hour. Cool. Just like the earlier BBC Model A's, Model B's and so forth, this architecture relies somewhat on ROMs. There are multiple ROMs available to BBC Micros to make, make it do its thing, load operating systems, languages and so on and so forth. In the master, the ROMs go here. Now if you looked really closely at some of the earlier footage, these ROMs here looked completely different. I've actually put a couple of new ROMs in. First up, this is the multi-OS ROM from Retro Clinic, and I'll show how that works in just a moment, as well as coming up with a way on how to integrate this neatly into the master, whilst not, well, I guess with as minimal case damage as possible, because there will need to be a very small case mod done in order to facilitate this in the long run. And master MMFS, now this is the ROM, the MMFS, which is a file system, which is part of the Turbo SPI system. Now, Turbo SPI is a very popular storage medium for BBC Micros. We'll get back to the file system a bit later on, but we'll go back to this multi-OS ROM. The multi-OS offers four different ROMs, being OS 1.2, OS 2.0, OS 3.2, and OS 3.5. OS 1.2 effectively turns your master into a BBC Micro Model B. OS 2.0 is based on the ROM used in the BBC B plus 64 and B plus 128. That's a little bit more of a techie kind of ROM, probably more for experimenters and hardcore coders. OS 3.2 is what this particular machine came with originally and that's what the majority of masters came with and OS 3.5 was the final iteration of the BBC Master ROM. You've got the whole family of BBC Micros ranging from the Model B right up to the very last of the Masters with just one ROM. So it's great that we've got this switch to be able to change from one particular type of BBC machine to another but where are we going to mount it? Do we have it sort of flapping about on the outside? I'm not sure. Do I really want to drill a hole in this case? Well, if needs must, but I'd rather not. It um, might be possible to jam it in one of the slots, but that's also kind of ugly. Could I cut a notch out on the side maybe? So just like a small notch, say on one of the sides here, but if you cut out a notch on the side, uh, not only are you damaging the case, but there's also a little issue of this assembly fouling the board, so I don't think that's an option either. One option which has been mentioned around the place, which I think would work quite well, is there's a little recess here in this back plate, which I'm not sure what the original plan was, what Acorn was going to do here, whether it was going to be a, a reset button or something like that, but you'll just see there, there's that, uh, there's that back plate there. I might see what it looks like from the back before I commit to anything. Well, the soldering iron is unplugged, so I'm going to use that just to prop this up so we can have a good look. Is that going to work? Okay. Yeah, stay classy. Get a bit of better lighting on it. You can actually see there is a cutout here. Now, what I'm wondering is if we look closely at how how thick that particular um, this part is here this so so I guess the stem of the switch which goes to the goes to the knob and obviously gets screwed in that might just about fit in there now one concern I do have with this switch is there's this little nodule here that may foul the top of the case so I'll need to be so that may have an impact as to how this actually gets mounted now can we just snip that out? Can we 
We should be able to snip that out, shouldn't we? Well, better still, a Stanley knife would be really handy right about now. Oh, bugger it, I'll do that off camera. I ended up snapping off the uh, that little nub, which is obviously not necessary. There's still a little bit left on there, which may give it a bit more purchase when it's being clamped against the back plate here. As far as the cutout goes, I've just decided to fold that back. So if I decide to take this out in future, um, whilst it wouldn't be as neat as if it was never tampered with, at least it's going to be a bit closer to originality than what it otherwise would be. So we'll just put that in the cutout there. Uh, let me just have a look and make sure I'm happy with the way this this looks. So we'll hand tighten that first before we bring in some pliers. Probably will put a dose of hot snot just around the back here, just for extra sort of reinforcement. But for now, I just want to make sure that this is going to work okay. Also, with the cover on, because of the internals, if this is fouling the internals, when I put the cover on, that's not going to help anybody. Uh, yeah, well, I've already caused a bit of damage there, might be. There are many uh, BBCs and Masters that wear battle scars of decades of tinkering. It's just what they're designed for. They're like the great British tinkerers computer. Obviously it's not screwed down yet, but you can see nothing's buckling or untoward. It's all, it's all sitting there just fine. So I reckon that's as good as it's going to get. And yeah, like I said, I reckon um, a bit of hot snot just to make sure it's not going to move and we'll be off to the races. So let's see how we go with the cover and the switch in situ. Okay, we have OS 3.5. We have 3.2. We have 2.0. And we have 1.2. So we're all good to go there. The manual suggests that for the most authentic experience, uh, just running it in OS 3.2 mode is the go, and that's fine by me. So yeah. Next time you see this BBC Master, I'll be attempting to install a Turbo SPI micro SD card storage system. Until then, see you later.